happy Friday. Welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gomancing. In our top story, this Saturday, November 11th, is Veterans Day, a day across the United States in which American citizens honor those men and women who have served in the many branches of the U.S. military during war. Virgin Islands residents have a long history of serving in the military from World War II onward. Richard Dorsey reports. Veterans Day is a day to honor and thank all military personnel who served the United States in all wars, particularly living veterans. The origins of Veterans Day was Armistice Day, which marked the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918 for the armistice between Germany and the Allied nations, which ended World War I. In the Virgin Islands, Veterans Day is marked with parades, as well as speeches by political figures and members of our armed forces. Virgin Islanders have long been among the first to answer America's call to duty. In some cases, even fighting in defense of this nation before we were even a part of it. Virgin Islands veterans' exceptional history of service to this great nation is unrivaled. Today is a tribute to their service and a reflection of their unwavering commitment to being whole. Across our nation, Veterans Day represents the triumph of all those who serve in the armed forces of the United States, and indeed, those who have overcome. As a part of the annual Veterans Day activities throughout the Virgin Islands this year, the Virgin Islands Office of Veteran Affairs and the American Legion District 10 will be honoring female veterans in the territory. Being honored as the parade marshal and guest speaker on the island of St. Croix is Major Kathleen A. Paris of the Virgin Islands National Guard. Serving as the guest speaker on the island of St. Thomas will be former military spouse Monique Y. Farrell. On the island of St. Thomas, Sergeant First Class Laurel Maloon Francis will be honored as the parade marshal. Richard Dorsey, News 2. Now, News 2 joins residents across the territory in honoring those who have served and encourages residents to see the parades on both St. Croix and St. Thomas. And, of course, those parades begin on St. Croix at 9 a.m. in Frederick said and 3 p.m. on St. Thomas. Well, in, in accordance with federal law, all federal and U.S. Virgin Islands government offices were closed in observance. However, public schools remained open in order to make up the classroom hours lost due to Hurricanes Irma and Maria. In observance of Veterans Day as well, the VIA Customer Experience Centers in St. Thomas at Tutu Park Mall and Estate Diamond in St. Croix will be closed on Saturday, November 11th. However, CECs at Sunshine Mall on St. Croix and the Marketplace on St. John are closed due to damages sustained from the hurricanes. VIA acknowledges and appreciates the efforts and sacrifices of men and women, including all the employees who have served their country in the armed forces. Normal business hours will continue at each operational location on Monday, November 13th. Also, the Office of the Insular Superintendent, St. Thomas, St. John District, they're reminding people of the Lockhart Elementary Schools opening on Monday, bringing all the schools in the district and the territory to an open. The school will operate its normal schedule from 8 a.m. to 2.45 p.m. They say the bus schedule remains the same to include transportation for special needs students. Governor Kenneth Mapp as well joins American citizens throughout the USVI and across the globe on Saturday in honoring veteran, veterans of the U.S. Armed Forces. He says, heroes who have offered their service to protect our freedom and way of life. Governor Mapp reflected on the many sacrifices of the military, members of the Virgin Islands National Guard and National Guard divisions across the U.S., he said the past several weeks have highlighted more than ever the selflessness of our military women and men. Our recovery efforts would nowhere be near where they are today were it not for their service. Governor Mapp commended the VI Office of Veterans Affairs for organizing this year's events. Senator Alicia Chucky Hansen shares her view on Veterans Day as well. She said, many Americans answer the call to duty, the call to fight for the rights that we have often taken for granted. But Virgin Islanders volunteered to fight for the U.S. when bombs were dropping and men were losing their lives voluntarily, not because they were looking for any praise, but because we are two Americans and it was our country that needed to be defended. She said it takes a special kind of individual to say, I will go and offer my life if that is the cost so that you can live in the greatest nation. And it is that which makes a veteran a hero. 
Well, in preparation, Frederick said town got some help today from a grassroots organization whose main purpose was to support the economic development and revitalization of the town's historical district. Today, the town was getting prepared to receive the cruise ship visit this weekend. However, information surfaced minutes to news time informing that that call was canceled. Stephanie Brown reports. Frederick said town sustained the blunt of Hurricane Maria's 137 miles per hour gust winds and the volunteer based group Clean Sweep Frederick's Dead work today to remove debris from the town. Um, today is our Clean Sweep Day re reboot because the first one we had got rained out but we still managed to get a lot of debris um, out of town and we started this because we just really wanted to uh, support the economic development revitalization of Frederickstead. Tomorrow, the Norwegian Don was scheduled to dock at the Frederickstead Pier with over 2,000 passengers. It's the first ship scheduled to the island since the hurricane. In a statement to the Caribbean Journal, the Commission of Tourism stated that St. Croix looks forward to welcome the passengers and crew of the Norwegian Don this weekend and sharing with them our warm, resilient, crucian spirit. However, restaurant and tourism-based businesses posted on social media today informing that the visit was canceled. With or without a cruise ship visit, the Clean Sweep Frederickstead organizer implored that grassroots organizations are vital to the community. I mean, agencies can't do everything. The nonprofit sector has to, uh, you know, fill in the gap, and so that's what we're about. So we all know public works and waste management don't have enough people to cover the island, but we have lots of people here, individuals who can participate and cleaning up their block, their street, their town, the island. With the help of the 67th Maneuver Enhancement Brigade and other volunteers, Frederick said town took a big step in returning to normalcy. It's a, a military unit from Nebraska, 30 of them, or 30 plus I think, that came out this morning. Um, started at Memorial Park and just sort of swept through the town and did a lot of cleaning up and then some other businesses joined in. So we had a pretty good turnout. For News 2, I'm Stephanie Shalana Brown. Well, meanwhile, the Adventure of the Seas sailed into the West Indian Company dock in St. Thomas early this morning, bringing a huge uh, amount of passengers. Commission of Tourism, Beverly Nicholson Doty said, we thank the countless Virgin Islanders and relief workers who have been working to restore power, clear roadways, prepare beaches, and many of our key attractions so that visitors can experience our special Virgin Islands brand of Caribbean hospitality. That was a quote, and the commissioner also explained that taxis, tour operators, and government agencies are working together to establish recommended routes for tours. Now, here's a look at some of the ships expected during the next week in St. Thomas. Most of the ships that were destined for Crown Bay at the Austin Babe Monsanto Terminal will instead dock at the Waiko. Be sure to check Waiko's website for the updates as well as the VI Port Authority's updates on the ship schedules. On Friday, as we shared, Adventure of the Seas rolled in. On Sunday, November 12th, it's Royal Princess. Wednesday, November 15th, CUI Discovery, New Amsterdam, Divina, Seaborn Odyssey. Thursday, November 16th, it's the Eurodam, and then Saturday, November 18th, the Norwegian Gem and the Royal Princess. It's nice to, you know, finally see people on Main Street as opposed to, you know, construction and clean up and stuff like that. So it's definitely been a pleasure to, you know, see people walking around again, people actually spending money. So it's definitely exciting. It's better than slow season. So I think things are finally starting to come around. People are actually open to the fact that the Virgin Islands is open for business again and starting to come and people are spending money so that's exciting to see like I said so. So business is starting to pick back up we see our first ships come in last week and we opened up on Wednesday and uh, we've got some high hopes uh, we, we are a little bit concerned about the hotels being closed but uh, I hear the ship traffic's going to start picking up now so uh, we're very encouraged by what we see today uh, there's a lot more traffic today with one ship and we saw all last week. So, uh, and next week I know we're going to start having three or four ships. So we're, we're very encouraged and we've got high hopes. Welcome back to St. Thomas. Uh, welcome back after a couple of interesting months. But as you, can, as you look around, as you see the streets, you're going to notice more doors open, more open for business signs. Slowly, slowly, but definitely positively and surely, it's going to take a little while to get our tourists back, our loyalty back, but what we can do now is remain optimistic and open for business, and that's what we are.
and it's really good to see and everybody's looking forward to getting back back to what we do best. And that is great news. Now, some went shopping down Main Street, but many of the tourists who left the dock headed to Megan's Bay for sun, sand, and sea. And a light celebration was held there just to welcome the guest of Royal Caribbean's Adventure of the Seas. It was a joint effort between Megan's Bay Authority and Royal Caribbean. A group was formed earlier and they put the plan into motion and cleaned the beach in an effort to make it the popular site it has been known for. Royal Caribbean donated a lot of resources to make it happen. And today's celebration was just the first phase of the restoration planned for the beach. It all included some music, dancing and mingling and more. Here, um, you know, we've been lucky with, with Royal Caribbean, like, like Mike said, they're really good about keeping us updated and doing itinerary changes when things became available. And you know, as soon as we found out we'd be able to come here, it was nice because originally we weren't going to make it to this island. Um, and so it was really nice to be able to, to come here and experience this one too. Even though it had been affected, we knew that it was going to be a beautiful place to visit. I'm very happy to be here, you know, glad. And I'm really glad to see people on the beach as well. First day back at work is great. It's nice. You know, we spent a lot of time and a lot of hard work on building this bar. In four days, we knocked this thing out to get set up for everything. Um, and it was, it was challenging, but we got it done and it looks good. We got it painted, um, stained, and filled with booze. And, you know, here giving everybody booze and having a great time, you know. Well, keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. That was my friend Nelson there. Taking a look at the numbers there, we can see the Dow down 39, NASDAQ up, S&P 500 also down. Coming up on News 2, we have much more straight ahead, including WAPA's restoration updates, um, updates on the EPA, and much, much more. We'll be right back. General uh, Claude Walker said that the Virgin Islands Parole Board will be convening beginning next month to hear testimonies from persons for and against inmates incarcerated at various institutions. The board will be meeting at the Golden Grove Correctional Facility on St. Croix and will be taking statements December 8th for inmates at the Golden Grove Correctional Facility on January 12, 2018, for inmates at the Citrus County Detention Center in Lecanto, Florida, inmates at the Central Arizona Florence Complex in Florence, Arizona, and those at the Keene Mountain Correctional Facility in Oakwood, Virginia. All meetings will start at 8 a.m. and the afternoon sessions will start at 12.30. Anyone interested in giving information to the board or testifying at the hearing must submit written comments to the board or advise the board of his, her desire to appear and testify ahead of time. Police report that on June 16, 2017, a minor female stated that Mr. Claudio Castro Cruz was molesting and sexually assaulting her from 2013 for, for approximately two years. Another minor female police say at a later date came forward and revealed that Mr. Claudio Castro Cruz had molested her as well from the age of five. This also continued for approximately over two years. Mr. Claudio Castro Cruz, 63, was arrested and charged with aggravated rape, first DV, on an arrest warrant issued by a magistrate of the Superior Court of the VI. The EPA's regional administrator, Pete Lopez, has reported that the EPA began assessments of hospital waste storage areas in late September as area medical facilities were becoming overwhelmed with waste and that was uh, during dealing with the impacts from the hurricanes. Hospitals in the USVI, he says, have been producing waste quicker than can be disposed of due to logistical limitations with the specialized shipping containers needed to move medical waste from the islands to the mainland for disposal. He said the EPA is making progress in addressing this potential public health threat. Since late October, approximately six tons of stockpiled medical waste at the Wanafui Hospital and Medical Center in St. Croix have been shipped off the island for proper disposal. And in St. Thomas, about 29 tons of medical waste have been properly packaged at the Schneider Regional Medical Center and are awaiting shipment for disposal. He says EPA's work with 
uh, to help the U.S. Virgin Islands government handle medical waste continues. They have taken steps to alleviate the problem in the short term while they work with FEMA, the Department of Health and Human Services, and the USVI government to develop longer-term solutions for the management and proper disposal of medical waste. Be sure to comment, too. We'll have an update on this uh, next week. Commissioner of Health Dr. Michelle Davis met on Wednesday with Director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Dr. Brenda Fitzgerald, and Director of the Office for State, Tribal, Local, and Territorial Support, Dr. Jose Montero. Drs. Fitzgerald and Montero met with staff and volunteers. They also made some time to tour the Herbert Grigg home. In the end, the CDC officials promised to evaluate federal and private resources to support the public health needs of the territory. Meanwhile, nutrition aid continues to flow into the territory with the USVI Department of Human Services. They reported that 7,400 applications for the Disaster Supplemental Nutrition Program, known as DSNAP, since the application process opened on Monday. Assistant Commissioner of the Department of Human Services, Everell Powell, reported that 2,000 applications were submitted on Monday, 2,500 on Tuesday, and 2,900 on Wednesday.